say, well, why is that so vital? Be honest. If we what we can get away with, we get away with. If we think that God is a little bit of a distance away, we're going to test our freedom. Amen? But the slack in the rope is still there. And God can still pull you back when you get too far out of line. Amen? Amen. We, we battle this every day. Every day. And when we're dealing with God's directive will, it's a little bit different. We, don't, we have no choice in dealing with God's directive will. You may not like it. You may not prefer it. May not even be your first choice. But you got to deal with it because it's God's will. Amen? Now, truth be told, as I said, many of us are not even aware when God's unseen hand is hovering around us. We lead ourselves to deceiving, and this is a vital mistake in our lives. We lead ourselves into deceiving ourselves, I should say, that we made it because of us. Amen? It's because of my smarts that got me in that position. Amen? I, I have this big house because I have this fancy job, and I, I work to get that. Amen? And, 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 and I'm so good at my job, I got that salary increase, and I'm driving this big fancy car because of, of me. Pastor talked about this mentality a few sermons ago. We talked about the mentality of focusing more on jobs, careers, and money than on God. We deceive ourselves into this trap. With all of that, we going back to the message, you know, two things stand out when we look at Joseph. One, through all the twists, through all the turns he had to go through, he never once uttered a woe is me or why cry, why me to God. We have a bad morning and the first thing, and we went church Sunday. We have a bad Monday morning, and the first thing we want to say is, why me, God? Why me? But Joseph never uttered those two words. Why me? Why me? The other thing about Joseph that is vital for us today is that Joseph always kept God at the center of his life always kept God at the center of his life. If we could only learn these two lessons, what a difference it would make in our faith walk. If we could keep our mouths shut and learn that a struggle is a part of all of our lives and that we're walking with God. So if we're walking with God, what can go wrong? If we believe we're walking with God, what can go wrong? If we learn these Two lessons. Didn't Jeremiah remind us? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. The NRSV version puts it a different way, a little bit better to me. It says, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Then will you call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. Joseph showed us all to be faithful through the twists, through the turns, and through the struggles. Look at the second verse in the 39th chapter. And it's again in the 21st and the 23rd verses of that 39th chapter. It tells us that the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph in such a mighty way that even Pharaoh could even see that the Lord was with him. If you want to make it through your struggles, keep the Lord with you. Yes. Keep him so close that even in the blink of your eye, folk will, will be able to look at you and say, the Lord is with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. What were Joseph's struggles? I 
told you I'm preaching the right lane. I'm not going to be here too long now, okay? I want to get you all home. What were Joseph's struggles? Joseph had many things. Like we said, he talked. Uh, Joseph had twists and turns in life. But when we try to boil it down, Joseph had three struggles that were placed in his life. First were the struggles that he placed, uh, or the burdens that he placed upon himself. That was his mouth. You and I have struggles that we place on ourselves that cause us to be put into a waterless pit. Amen? Amen? Second, Joseph had to struggle with his dysfunctional family. Now, I'm sure that all of you have family. That's just wonderful. Amen. <laughs> June bug and them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> A few months ago, I had a family, attended a family reunion of members of my father's side of my family. I hadn't seen many of them for about 25 years because they had issues back then. <laughs> and I learned that at that reunion, I could get along with them, Deacon Jackson. I could get along with them because I only see them once every 25 years. So if I, if I can space it out like that, it's not bad. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but them Negroes got some problems. <laughs> Amen. I love them. I love them. But boy, them colored folks can get on your nerves. You know? They want to check to see what you drive. I drive a car. What, what is the difference does it make? Okay? Like, be specific. I have a truck. Okay? What do you drive? You know? But I love him. But this dysfunctional family, Joseph had to deal with also. The 41st Psalm tells us about this struggle also. When, when even David cries out of, uh, that even my bosom friend, in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, even he has lifted his heel against me. I'm here to witness to you that family and friends and loved ones can put more on you and do you more harm than you can do yourself. Amen. 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 And Joseph also had to deal with his family uh, as, as well. The third struggle that Joseph had to deal with uh, and the struggles that we all deal with are the burdens those around us place on us. Now, these are not family. Amen. This is not coming from self. But these are others. It may be a supervisor, a colleague, a man in another division, a friend that you work with, someone at church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but these, they put burdens on us. And Joseph had to deal with this too. He had to deal with Potiphar and his wife. And, and Joseph being strong in the Lord, he turned Potiphar's wife away. And just like some folk will do, they will try to bring you down. Either they are trying to take something away from you, or they're trying to put more on you. Amen? Amen. Uh, they want to see you doing good, just not better than them. Amen. 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 And they, 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 they do all of these things. And if you're doing better than, than they are, then they start talking about you. The 41st Psalm tells us again that, uh, that, that all who hate me whisper together about me, and they imagine the worst for me. Amen? Those are the others that we have to deal with. So you see, like Joseph, we all have struggles. But if we focus on the struggles, we never will be able to lift our heads up to see what thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. We have to learn like Joseph that we have to keep the Lord with us through the struggles. 
And if we must remain in that struggle, we must remain faithful with the Lord in our struggles. Amen? Amen. Uh, he that endures to the end, the same shall be free. The same shall be saved. Amen? Amen? Joseph endured believing in and remaining faithful to God. And because he was able to do that, we get to a shout. All right. All right. Now that's in the fifth through the ninth verses of our text. And I asked you to place a place mark right there a little earlier of what God hath made me. God hath made me. And that's Joseph's shout. Now you have a shout also, but it's similar to Joseph. God hath made me. Look at it. In those five verses, five times, Joseph talks about and shouts about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen? Never once in those five verses did he talk about what I did. Yes. Yes. Right. Never once did he talk about what I achieved. Yes. Never once did he talk about what I have overcome. Yes. Joseph said, God hath made me. Yes. God hath. God has. And I believe that was a shout because anytime you start talking about the goodness of the Lord, if you love the Lord, after about that second time, something starts to work inside you. Amen? And something moves in you when you start thinking about the fact that, yes, the Lord woke me up this morning. That should be a shout right there. Amen? Any time, and then you get to about the third or the fourth time, you almost tearing the roof off the house because you shouting about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. When you love the Lord, you don't mind shouting about it. Amen. God did Amen. send me here Amen. before you to preserve you. Yes. You didn't put me here. Amen. It was the Lord. Amen. God sent me here. To preserve you, God hath made me a father to Pharaoh. God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Not I, but God was the molder. I was the clay. God did it. I didn't do a thing. God did it, and he'll do it for you if you ask him. Don't focus on your struggles, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I have come only this morning to give you that small word. Don't focus on your struggles. You're always, as long as we live in this world, going to have some struggles. Amen. 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 Amen? Amen? Jesus told us that in this world, uh -huh. you will, you shall, amen, amen. Uh -huh. Ain't much gray area in that one, is it? You shall have trouble, but I have overcome the world. So yes, you will struggle, but resign yourself to have a good travel partner with you while you're on your way. Amen. Invite Jesus to travel with you. Amen. You need a pretty good travel partner with you. And if you ask him, he'll come. I don't care what you put on him. Ask him and he'll come to you and he'll carry you through. So your struggle may be a dysfunctional family. Well, well. Your struggle may be loved ones or friends around that you, 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 you surround yourself with. Uh -huh. You may put struggles on yourself, well, well. but call out until the Lord, uh -huh. and he'll bring you through, yes. and you'll be able to shout, God has yes. saved me. Yes. God has yes. directed me. Yes. God has 